Hello, my name is Lauren and I'm a children's librarian at Cheshire Public Library. Today I'm going to venture from my home office and travel all the way to the kitchen and I'm going to show you a fun and easy recipe that you can do at home. I'll show you how you can transform a gallon of milk and a little bit of vinegar and make some delicious cheese. I'm going to demonstrate ricotta, which is a mild tasting fresh cheese that's used in Italian cooking. You'll find it in things like ravioli, pizza, cannoli, cheesecake, basically all of the major food groups. So what do you say? Let's get cooking. There are two basic ingredients, milk and vinegar. Cheese is mostly made up of fat, so a milk with a higher fat content, such as whole milk, will give you a higher yield. That's kitchen speak for more cheese. Regardless of your fat percentage, read the label to make sure that your milk is not ultra pasteurized. All the milk you find at the store will be pasteurized, which means it's been heated up a little bit to kill any germs or bad bacteria. Ultra pasteurized milk has been heated to even higher temperatures, and it's not going to work for cheese making. Sometimes the label will tell you where the milk comes from. As a rule of thumb, the closer the better. Even though this brand of milk is owned by a company in Texas, the milk actually comes from dairies right here in New England, so we're good to go. For equipment, you will need a pot that's big enough to hold the milk, a measuring cup, spoons to stir the milk and lift out the curds, a colander or sieve lined with a cheesecloth, and a container for your cheese. It's good to also have a thermometer and a kitchen timer. Set your pot on the stove and pour in the milk. If you're a young cook, ask an adult to help you with this part. Next, measure out three quarters of a cup of vinegar and add it to the milk. Stir it up so the acid in the vinegar can start working its magic. Turn on your stove and set it to about medium heat. Now we're going to let this mixture heat up until it's about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little below its boiling point of 212 degrees. Check the temperature every few minutes and give it a gentle stir so the milk doesn't burn on the bottom of the pot. So what exactly is going on in that pot? Well, milk is an emulsion of about 85% water and 15% solids, such as fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. When we mix milk with an acid like vinegar, the solids start to separate from the liquid. In milk terms, the curds are separating from the whey or curdling. Heating milk to a high enough temperature also causes curdling, so we're using two different chemical processes, heat and acidification, to induce curdling. You'll see the separation more and more as the milk heats up. It might look gross to some folks, but trust me, it's going to be delicious. Okay, we've reached a little above 200 degrees and it's time to turn off the heat. You can see that I actually let mine get just a little too hot and it started to boil, but that's okay. Even without the thermometer, we can clearly see that the curds have separated from the whey. And feel free to play with the curds, it's super fun. I'm going to set a timer for about 10 minutes so the milk can keep on curdling. Now it's time to strain the liquid whey from the solid curds. Use a slotted spoon to scoop the biggest chunks of whey into a colander lined with a cheesecloth. I have a bowl underneath the colander to catch the liquid whey. The curds and whey are very hot, so be careful and ask for help if you need it. Next, carefully pour out the rest of the whey into the container. This is the messiest part and the pot will be heavy, so ask for help again if you need it. Once everything is poured into the colander, I'm going to set my timer to let the liquid whey drain off from the solid cheese curds. 20 minutes should do it. My timer's gone off and my cheese is ready. Time to scoop it into a container. You can see that I have a nice thick cheese and it's going to get a little thicker as it cools off in the refrigerator. If you want a thinner cheese, Try draining it for only five or 10 minutes so it retains more liquid. If you want a thicker cheese, you can drain it for up to an hour. If it ends up too thick, you can always mix in some of the whey that you saved. And we have cheese. It tastes great on its own, but I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt and mix it up. Most cheeses have some amount of salt in them. Now for the moment of truth, cheesy perfection. Now for all that leftover whey. It's slightly acidic, and it still has some nutrients, including lactose. My very favorite thing to do with the whey is to make pizza dough. I'll show you how to make homemade pizza in a later video. If you don't like pizza, you can use whey instead of water in any recipe for soft, chewy breads like dinner rolls, bagels, or French bread, 
or you can cook pasta in it. You can also head to your backyard and feed it to chickens, or use it to fertilize tomatoes, blueberries, azaleas, and other plants that like slightly acidic soil. Keep an eye out for an upcoming tutorial on how to make pizza, and in the meantime, check out CheshireLibrary.org to borrow some digital cookbooks. Stay safe, be healthy, and thanks for watching.